Center, 448 North 1st, Jessup. Cars, trucks, and SUVs of nearly all makes and models. We want your business. Bring your mom and them, and we all have a ball. That Woody is one sweet boy. He ain't like some of them big city car guys that walk around as baffled as Adam on Mother's Day. <laughs> <laughs> Woody Folsom Overflow, y'all. Jessup GA. We want your business. Local news on WIFO. It's time now for the latest in local news. In the news, the Wayne County Board of Education made a work session yesterday afternoon. Big topic for discussion turned out to be the athletic budget with athletic director and head football coach Ken Cribb on hand with the proposed budget and request for incentive clauses for the coaches and also to make that incentive clause retroactive to the beginning of this past school year, including all coaches and programs that won region championships and advanced to state. First, the budget. Cribb told the board that he went back and looked at last year's budget and the past three years' athletic budget says he's found several problems with the budget. He says the main problem is that the projections far exceeded incoming revenue, which is a big problem when you're dealing with budgets. For example, the projections for football income was 20000 short with just three wins last year. Cripp says the budget last year $40,000 short, so he's gone in and cut $10,000 from the football budget this year, another $10,000 from the baseball program for a $20,000 cut, and plans to have two major fundraisers to make up the other $20,000, one of the fundraisers a golf tournament. Cripp says he plans to meet with all his coaches from all sports, high school and school, get everyone on the same page and make them understand that they need to take the ownership of their program and see to it that it stays within budget and that coaches do what they can to raise funds for their program, whether it be through a booster club or a fundraising event. We'll hear from Coach Cripp shortly after the, about the budget and about a second item where he proposed an incentive clause for his coaches as they will be rewarded for region championships and for every round that they advance to the state. Cripp says if you want to maintain good coaches, you have to offer an incentive to keep them here. Sharon Daniels disagreed, saying that Wayne County hasn't had a problem with retaining coaches. She says most coaches have left because of self-inflicted issues. We really have not had that kind of retention problem. Our retention problem is getting people to use common sense. That's been our problem. Well, so I think it's the coach. coach. The coach is just trying to, to take a look at it. Well, we just got out of, we just got out of, out of the recession. Look. You understand? You just got out of the recession. Now, if you want to ask for it, you have to lose something. That's last year's last Thanksgiving. Yeah. yeah. But, but, but you talk about, that's correct. But you're talking about guys that are, are out there every week. Right now, I have I have about 10 coaches working all summers in their pay. They're there every day killing them. And we're not going to pay them. We can't pay them. This little bit of money is just a little bit of appreciation. No one would fight for them. Appreciate what they're doing. And this, this is a very small. They're not the only one. I mean, that's that. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. It's a lot. Of, okay, listen. I'm not saying, once again, not to not recognize them as far as an incentive. What I'm saying is, I think it needs to be revamped on what time frame you make that determination when you're going to give an incentive and give a flat fee across the thing. Because if I was a baseball coach, and I play three games every round to get to the state championship game. That's a lot of games. It is a lot of games. Okay, so you're telling me I'm gonna get a uh, how much is it? Three hundred, six hundred dollars each game, each round to get to the state playoffs. And I play how many rounds you got there? Five. Let's say I play uh, that's fifteen games. Okay, versus five games for football. That wouldn't sit well with me as, as a coach. Because I'd be thinking, I'm playing uh, 15 games, you're playing five, but because you get a higher percentage as a, you get, because you get a higher percentage as a head coach, you get more money. So does your assistants. Now, is my state uh, playoff game or championship any less important than yours? It shouldn't be. But based on, if you're looking at the monies and in real time, real world, that's what that basically says. The board opted to implement Coach Cripps' proposed budget yesterday with the incentive clause, and the incentive clause was retroactive for the past school year. The vote for the budget was unanimous. The vote for the incentives for one was Sharon Daniels voting against. After the meeting, we talked with head coach Ken Cripp about his proposed budget and the proposal for incentive clauses. So you had to make some cuts. In well, we did, we did. We did. We, you know, the biggest thing is uh, when you're a zero-based zero budget, you know, you have to spend what you make, and uh, you got to get your, you got to base your projections off the past. 
because you really can't tell the future, but you just try to find uh, try to find a mean uh, of what's what's you know usually it's not going to be far off the past. It fluctuates some, so just making a, a educated guess and uh, but being using realistic uh, <coughs> approach rather than uh, optimistic. Um, you know, want to be uh, realistic with the revenue, the project revenue, but be optimistic with what we can, what we need, what we can spend. So um, I'm excited about budget for next year. Uh, I hope every sport exceeds their uh, projection, and uh, that way things get a lot better for, for for every sport at Wayne County High School. You are the AD, as you mentioned. It's all about communication. You talked about sitting down with all the coaches and some of these coaches taking ownership of their programs. As you mentioned, there's only a few money revenue sports like football, baseball, like I said, those took cuts in the budget because, uh, like I said, the budget was $40,000 right. in the red. So uh, talk about that, the conversation you'll have with these coaches about taking ownership and what do you mean by that? Well, I think, you know, openly communicate with these coaches and them knowing where they are is, uh, is key. Uh, I think every coach we have on, on staff is going to want to be responsible and uh I think they're going to take pride, you know, and, uh, and pull, doing their part and, and their sport, taking care of themselves, and uh, you know, just making sure we're all working together. Uh, it's not a competition at all. We need to support each other, and we need to get the general fund going because there's a lot of, a lot of things we want to uh, improve on, and uh, we want to improve on facilities. You know, we're looking forward to hopefully one day having uh, activity buses for all our teams to travel on. Um, and we want to, you know, each we want to be one of the top, the top athletic department in uh, in Georgia. So. Uh, uh, it's going to be fun. This process is going to be fun. I, you know, I'm working on planning and scheduling a coaches' convocation where all our coaches come together and you know we're able to share ideas and uh, go over expectations and go over budget and you know and uh, all you know have input. So uh, that's what I welcome. Uh, uh, and working together with all our coaches and uh, you know we got some great coaches and so all these guys getting together, all the coaches sharing with each other and uh, do nothing but help us. You mentioned supplements in Wayne County really don't compare to some other areas. Uh, you were able to get the incentive plan in. It's going to be retroactive to this past school year, so I know you're happy about that, especially with the successful run that the baseball team had. Absolutely. You know, we got some we got some really hardworking coaches who are dedicated, and uh, you know, that you can never pay coaches enough for what they do. I mean, you know, not only, not counting the times they've, they've driven kids home, spent their gas money, uh, bought them food, uh, helping them pay for summer school. I mean, just just different doing different things, and uh, 40 kids uh, taking them to to camps and combines or college visits. I mean, you're always helping your kids. Uh, you know, you're not even going to get the money back that you've invested in your kids and your program. So it's just a way to, to show our appreciation and, and hope they're happy here at Wayne County High School. And uh, I want these coaches to stay. I want the best coaches. I mean, I'm real proud of the staff and the guys that we have here and we retain that's been on staff and, and especially the guys that we're bringing in. We're bringing in some quality, quality people. Are going to be great for our community. Great teachers, great coaches. So, uh, you know, you don't you don't have the best without making sure that there's you're offering them something. So, you know, happiness. Uh, uh, you know, having some participation, ownership. You know, having a stake in what we're doing um, and making them feel appreciated. Okay, coach. Thanks. Thanks, Bob. Once again, those guns, Coach Cribb, yesterday at the board meeting again. We'll hear more from him in sports as he told the board that he was fearful of losing Coach Justin McDonald after the state playoff run and playing for the state title. And Cribb says, believe me, Justin McDonald had offers to go elsewhere. Cribb says deep down he wants to stay in Wayne County, but he and his staff need to be rewarded for the season they just had. Again, those comments coming up in sports. Another news from the school board meeting. School systems moving into the two wings at this time at the new Martha Rowell Smith School. As they state, everything is still on schedule for the new school being ready for the upcoming school year. They renewed the family connection contract with the state. And they approved the fiscal year 2018 budget. No one on hand from the public to comment on the budget. Again, that was on the agenda yesterday at the work session. Under personnel yesterday, following personnel approved, certified recommendations, Monica McGee, Martha Ross Smith Elementary, certified resignations, Jesse Barfield, Wayne County High School, James Hobbs, Arthur Williams Middle School, Diane Larson, Martha Ross Smith Elementary, retiring, and Noah Madison, Wayne County High School. Classified recommendations. Delicia Baker, James E. Bacon Elementary, Katrina Corey, Martha Ross Smith Elementary, Alicia Gardner, James E. Bacon Elementary, Michael Leon Ingram, James E. Bacon Elementary, Denise Simmons, James E. Bacon Elementary. Classified transfers, Carolyn Gage, Jessup Elementary to Martha Ross Smith Elementary, Ray Morris Maintenance to Assistance Maintenance Director. Classified resignations, Catherine Flowers, James E. Bacon Elementary, and Charity McGee, Wayne County High School. Again, that the personnel approved at yesterday's work session 
by the Board of Education. We'll come back with more news after this word from our sponsor of the commercial messages, so please stay tuned. Communication is the key when it comes to business, especially your financial business. That's why Altamaha Federal Credit Union makes communication a priority, making banking easier for you. AFCU has money to lend, and it's easy to apply online or with a quick phone call. Your local credit union with open lines of communication. Altamaha Federal Credit Union. Jessup, Scriven, and Ludowisi. Visit Altamaha.org. Equal housing lender federally insured by NCUA. Morton Collision is located at 1320 West Pine Street in Jessup. Morton's offers free estimates, 23-hour towing, and they guarantee their work. Call 427-3769 or after hours, 912-294-6140. The staff at Morton Collision Center works with all insurance companies. So for guaranteed work with a qualified staff, go to Morton Collision at 1320 West Pine Street in Jessup. Morton Collision, quality you can see. It's a new and better way to buy. It's live market pricing at Neesmith Chevrolet Buick GMC on East Cherry Street. We constantly monitor auto websites to offer the most aggressive market prices. The low market price is our live market price. That's why we're the home of the no-hassle deal. Save time, save money, and know for sure that Neesmith's live market prices are the lowest possible price that we can offer. Neesmith Chevrolet. Chevy, find new roads. Check out these June specials at Harris Ace Hardware. Master built electric smoker, sale price at $129.99 with Ace Rewards card. DeWalt bit sets and saw blades on sale for $9.99 and also craftsman tools for $9.99 and $2.99. Other specials at Harris Ace, Jacobson golf carts are $1,000 off MSRP for the month of June only. Don't forget, Harris Ace has gift cards for that special man in your life. Shop Wayne County's favorite hardware store, Harris Ace Hardware today, located on West Cherry Street in Jessup. A nationwide search is being conducted for two escaped inmates, Donnie Russell Rowe and Ricky DuBose, who shot and killed two correctional officers in Putnam County on Tuesday. That, according to Putnam County Sheriff Howard Sills, shooting the two correctional officers was caught on video. Law enforcement continued to search into the evening, and the search continues today statewide and nationwide for the two escaped inmates. They escaped from a bus during routine prisoner transfer. The men were reportedly seen in a family dollar store on Eaton Road in Madison, Georgia, where they also ransacked the house, stealing clothes and food. These men are armed and extremely dangerous, and Sheriff Sewell says his biggest fear is that they may do harm to someone else. Massive nationwide search continues today with the FBI, GBI, and other agencies offering a $60,000 reward for information leading to their capture. Deadly shootings happened about 5.45 a.m. Tuesday on Georgia 16 in Putnam County between Eatonton and Sparta, prompting officials to place all Department of Correction facilities across the state on lockdown for the foreseeable future. Inmates overtook the guards. There was a gate between the officers and the inmates on the bus, and the two prisoners went through the gate. Sheriff says he can't tell how they got the gate open. He says it should have been locked. After disarming the officers, one of the inmates shot and killed them. The duo then carjacked a dark green 2004 Honda Civic, sped off in a stolen car, broke into a home in Madison, dumped their prison clothes, and escaped again. The person in the Honda Civic, they state, was not injured. The two slain officers, Sergeant Christopher Monica and Sergeant Curtis Ballou, both of Milledgeville, had been with the department for quite some time. Ballou, age 58, had been with the department since July of 2007. Monica, age 42, had been with the department since October of 2009. Monica and Ballou were the first Georgia prison guards killed since 2012 when an inmate stabbed Telfair prison official Larry Steele to death. Once again, the nationwide manhunt underway today. Wayne County Superior Court in session this week. Judge Stephen Kelly will be back on the bench this Thursday. Ten more pleas from a 29-page criminal calendar set for this Thursday. More pleas taken Monday with Judge Wilkes. Here's a look at some of the pleas that took place on Monday. Christopher Drotty pled guilty to possession of methamphetamine, possession of marijuana less than an ounce, three years of probation on the meth conviction, and 12 months concurrent on the marijuana conviction. Don Alvin Vale pled guilty to violation of Georgia employment security law, receives five years probation, $8,616 in restitution to the Georgia Department of Labor. He pled under the first offender status. Gwen Robertson pled guilty to possession of meth, possession of a drug-related object, three years probation on the meth conviction, 12 months to run concurrent on the possession of drug-related object. James Poole pled guilty to possession of controlled substance and possession of a drug-related object and drugs not in the original container, received three years probation. Daniel Sloan pled guilty to burglary, four years probation, also $1,000 in restitution, pled under first offender status. Clayton Hardy sentenced to four years probation, pled guilty to fleeing and attempted to elude police, driving without a license, hit and run, and interference with government property. 
Tony Lamar Hoover who has his burglary charge lowered to theft by taking, received 12, year, I'm sorry, 12 months probation. Stacy Spell pled guilty to possession of oxycodone and drugs not in the original container, possession of a drug-related object, three years probation. Again, more pleas expected this Thursday. A motions day set for Monday 19th. The trial date set for June 26th. Again, WFOFM continues to report on the criminal proceedings at the Wayne County Courthouse. We'll come back with some final news notes after this word from our sponsor of the commercial messages, so please stay tuned. Communication is the key when it comes to business, especially your financial business. That's why Altamaha Federal Credit Union makes communication a priority, making banking easier for you. AFCU has money to lend, and it's easy to apply online or with a quick phone call. Your local credit union with open lines of communication. Altamaha Federal Credit Union. Jessup, Scriven, and Ludowisi. Visit Altamaha.org. Equal housing lender federally insured by NCUA. When further treatment is no longer an option, hospice can provide services to manage symptoms and difficulties caused by illness. Emotional, psychosocial, and spiritual care, as well as support to the families and caregivers, are all part of hospice care. Hospice of South Georgia has been a part of the health community in Wayne and surrounding counties for over 13 years. The professional yet compassionate attention provided by our staff is unsurpassed. Widely supported by donations from the local population, Hospice of South Georgia is the only nonprofit hospice in Wayne County. Our new administrative offices, located at 1625 Sunset Boulevard, have opened recently as phase one of our building project. Hospice of South Georgia accepts anyone who meets hospice criteria, regardless of their ability to pay. Please call 912-588-0080 to speak to someone about hospice care. That was 912-588-0080. We are your hometown hospice, and we are here to serve you. Hospice of South Georgia, working to add life to your days. Deal and Dave at Paul Thigpen Chevrolet in Vidalia is ready for you to ride. Dave, tell them about it. I got Silverado for 0% for up to 60 months. I got Equinox with 17% off and 0% for 72 months. Silverado 1500 Crew Cab LT has 17% off. Get 0% financing for 72 months on your new Tahoe or Suburban. Get 10% off the power of the Chevy Corvette. Chevy, find new roads. Y'all come on down and let's do some bids. Else Restrictions apply. See dealer for details. Final notes of news today is Flag Day. Again, you can see the flags all around Wayne County. And they had a special ceremony early this morning at the Jessup Elks Lodge. The Wayne County Sheriff's Department Honor Guard posted colors, followed by a brief history of the flag by Jim Poindexter. Again, that took place this morning at the Elks Lodge around 7.30 a.m. But again, the flags all around Wayne County. Again, Flag Day celebrated all across the United States. The Chamber of Commerce has a ribbon cutting set for tomorrow. At the new Parker's Convenience Store located at 4501 Savannah Highway in Jessup. The event begins tomorrow at 10 a.m. So that you can welcome them to Wayne County. Enjoy a full breakfast bar with egg casserole, bacon, sausage, cheese grits, and biscuits. As well as Parker's famous homemade southern fried chicken, fingers, mac and cheese, vegetables, and daily lunch and dinner specials. And that's tomorrow at 10 a.m. The Chamber's ribbon cutting at the Parker's Convenience Store located on the Savannah Highway across from Rainier. Chamber ready for their annual legacy dinner set for a week from this Thursday, June 22nd. At the Pine Forest Country Club, it's a sold-out event. The meal will be a steak and shrimp dinner. Awards will be presented. The annual Small Business of the Year, Ambassador of the Year, Distinguished Service Award winner, Business Leader of the Year, also an Excellence in Agriculture Award to be presented. And it's all set for Thursday, June 22nd at the Pine Forest Country Club. Plans underway for the City of Scrivens July 4th celebration. Saturday, July 1st, great fireworks show. Again, scheduled. Food space for the evening is available. $50 with power, $40 without power. Forms available at Scriven City Hall or the Tourism Board Office at the Jessup Train Depot. Street vendor permits for those not selling in the park area are $20 each. You must have a permit to sell in Scriven on this date. Music and booths begin at 6. The presentation of the colors begin at 7.15. Fireworks will begin that evening at 9.30. Again, the City of Scriven wants to thank Wayne Moore Hospital for its continued financial support of the fireworks for Scriven, Wayne County, and all of South Georgia. If you need more information before Saturday, July 1st, call Scriven City Hall at 579-2211. But again, the fireworks show set for Saturday, July 1st, in the city of Scriven. That's going to do it for the latest in local news. Sports comes your way in a few minutes. Bob Morgan saying have a great day. You've been listening to local news on WIFO. It's the Sizzlin' Summer Sale going on now during the Drive and Discover event at your...